Thank you for listening to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast, available on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Amazon Music. Also, please follow Matt's Movie Reviews on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, X, and Rumble. And of course, be sure to visit mattsmoviereviews.net for the latest reviews, top 10 lists, and more. Now, onto the show. I've been trying to tell y'all Brett Clayton's coming to rob your bank. Listen up, you shut up! And I came to put a bullet in him. <laughs> My name is Johnny Black. I am no gentleman and I am no preacher. I thought I would join you for Brett for Hallelujah. That man is not what he pretends to be. Surprise! Didn't the Bible say to turn the other cheek? I don't know. I mean, probably. Y- yeah. I said stop. Stop me. But it also said you could hit a bully with a slingshot. And this is mine. I'm crack shot, Mom. Well, now you just shot. I think ain't no preacher at all. False prophets rose among the people. You know this vile man, Reverend Famine? Reverend Famine? Ah! I'll be Reverend Famine, and you'll be my deacon. Now, why in God's name would I agree to do something like that? There's oil been found on the property. Ooh, hallelujah! Now, this town is about to come into a whole heap of money. We must arm ourselves and prepare for the worst. Well, I'd rather die on my feet than live on my knees. Let's go. I say a life worth living is a life worth defending. I was beginning to think I lost you to another woman. If you have unforgiveness in your heart, then you are shackled to your past. Put me down! Say, turn it loose. Turn it loose. You don't drop your guns by the end of this sentence. That wasn't a complete sentence. Hello and welcome to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast. I am your host, Matthew Perkovich, and this is episode number 555. Out now in cinemas across the US is outlaw Johnny Black, a Western comedy that tells the story of a vengeance-filled outlaw who, while on the run from the law, poses as a preacher in a small town. A story of faith and justice in the Old West that successfully balances the silly with the sincere, outlaw Johnny Black also marks the latest film from director, writer, and star Michael Jai White. I'm glad to say he joins me now on the podcast. Michael, how are you today? I'm fine yourself. I'm very well, thank you. It's an absolute pleasure to talk to you today, especially about this movie, because I know the idea for... Outlaw Johnny Black has been with you for a very long time. And in, in a lot of ways, it represents you as a, a filmmaker, a storyteller, an entertainer in a lot of different facets. Um, you created it. You you put the money together for it. You made it. It's out now. Now it's out. So what type of feelings do you have about the film now that it's out? Because it's been with you for such a long time and it's out of your hands now. It's out in the world. So what type of feelings do you have in regards to the movie? Well, I mean, the, the way the way I look at it is like it's like raising a child. You do you do your best in it out in the world, and you hope it it, it does you proud, you know. Uh, so, I mean, my my thing is, I was blessed to be able to put my all into it. So, I'm I'm very happy about that, and I'm I'm really happy about the responses I've been getting from the from the uh, reviewers and and people who have you know seen the movie. I'm I'm getting all this great feedback, so. I, I'm 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 very happy. What I love about the film is that when it comes to actors, entertainers, people have a perception of who they are as people based on what's on the screen. <clears throat> and what is awesome about Outlaw Johnny Black, and in a lot of ways, um, Black Dynamite as well, about which came out back in 2009, is that you've said have said that these are movies that you want to see on the big screen, um, and a lot of that comes down to you know, comedy. You have said that people perceive you as this kind of like serious ass kicker, but you're like, 
hey, I'm a really kind of silly guy behind the scenes. I'm actually we're quite down to earth, and I love comedy, and I love that stuff. Do you uh, do you uh, feel that hopefully a movie like Outlaw Johnny Black can change perceptions as who you are as an actor and as a as a storyteller, as a director? Um, and do you foresee in the future maybe doing more comedy? Because I've written in my review for the movie that I think comedy is something that you should strongly pursue more in the future because I think you're a really natural talent at it. Well, thank you. Uh, the strange is it's strange to, for people uh, to know this, but I've actually done more comedy than, than anything else. If you lined up everything I've done, um, like, you know, with the... Um, there's several movies like with the Tyler Perry movies and TV series and things like that. Um, even the TV series that I'm, uh, that I'm about to do uh, the second um, season of, uh, of Kingdom Business is coming out that these things, I, I, my comic flair is really kind of heightens my, my, my character. But, um, but when you do things like martial arts, People are used to pigeonholing you to some degree, and it's just it's just really from their conditioning and not anything uh, of you know my my side. Uh, so I, I understand that because usually your action stars are not people who are writing or or playing the piano or uh, doing a number of uh, the kind of eclectic things that I do. So I'm the oddball, not not other people. So I I, I understand being a little. Um, confusing to folks. When it comes to the comedy in the film, um, it, it's my favorite type of comedy in movies. I'm a big fan of, I'm, which I'm sure you are as well, like Mel Brooks, and um, and I know you're a big fan of Monty Python and Peter Sellers and, and, and you know people like that as well. Um, when you write comedy in in your on, on your dialogue and, and jokes and such, how long do you like to work on the material? Do you have stuff that you always had in your mind? Do you not have notes that you write down? Do you have ideas in your head when it comes to comedy pitches that you like to, to keep on hand? I have books of comedy. I have things that I, I can't help but see things in a comedic tone. I mean, that's really who I am. Anybody who really knows me, I mean, people describe me as very funny and other people outside of that, they can't believe it. Because they go, wait a minute, the guy that like can you know kick you in the head uh, is uh, is funny. Like I like again, I understand the confusion with people. Um, I, I I talk about there was a there was a comedian. My wife and I went out to a comedy night, um, and incidentally, I I write I've written for comedians, stand up comedians. I have a lot of friends who are uh, stand up comedians, and one comedian friend of mine, uh, I believe it was. Uh, it was a Chris Spencer called me Denzel Van Swartzenhart. <laughs> and I thought that was funny, but it pretty insightful. The, the, uh, yeah, the audience laughed quite a bit, but it, it was, it's kind of weird, but it, it, it explains the di dichotomy and the confusion because of the obvious references of Denzel Washington, leading, leading actor, which I do leading actor, Van the Van Damme with the martial arts stuff, Swartz and Hart, in other words, but then, you know, the working out the muscle thing and that kind of a thing. And then Hart being Kevin Hart uh, from the comedy. So again, like I'm the oddity, not the public. So it's, it's quite natural for people to not be able to, you know, just kind of fit me on one shelf and, and be confused by that. The Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast is brought to you by Tee Public. Tee Public is the world's largest marketplace for independent creators to sell their work on the highest quality merchandise. With over 1.2 million designs, Tee Public is sure to have something you will love. Please support Matt's Movie Reviews on Patreon. Get access to exclusive content, request movie reviews and top 10 lists, and help support my work. Please click on the Patreon link in the description below. The other thing I love about Outlaw Johnny Black is that there's a, a balance to the film in that on one end you have kind of like Western tropes, on the other hand you have this comedy. Amidst all of it, there's a real kind of sincere message in the film about faith and forgiveness. There's a moment in the movie where you do a sermon um, and you you talk about letting it loose, letting go of things. And I think yeah. 
what what really what that sermon I think will do for a lot of people, it did as it did for me. It speaks to a lot of things that are happening right now in the world where people just seem to be holding on to stuff all the time. They just seem to be holding on to grudges. They seem to be holding on to to anger. Um, And I think people just have to take a breath and just let it loose. And I think that's what I really loved about that sermon. When it comes to putting those elements into the film and particularly writing that scene, um, how did you try to approach it and weave it in? To this story because as i said before it's a delicate balance it could tip one way or another but it works quite well uh in in the film well that that's the thing i'm the most happy about because that's the message of the film and that's the message i'm going to share out there in the world uh we get together we traverse our you know our our, our paths and we meet in a theater to see this movie our lives come together and at that moment if i can give you something to take back with you, then I've done my my purpose. The first screening that I had, a producer came and saw the movie, called me the next day and said that he hadn't spoken to his mother in eight years. But after seeing the, the movie, he contacted her and you know took the first steps in re, you know, rekindling their relationship. And when he shared that with me, being a producer of Hollywood, he's seen countless movies, of course. If this movie could touch him and, and, and make him do that, I felt like I was doing the right thing. And so I'm so happy that people are getting that message. I think we can laugh. We can in, enjoy each other's company. And, and you know, and I want to remind folks of how, how we're more similar than we are different. And, um, you know, in that sermon that you speak of, I, I, I want, you know, I, I'm glad it comes off as something that people can't see coming, right? Because the actual character, Johnny Black, doesn't see it coming. Yeah. In the midst of the whole thing, he realizes he's absolutely been uh, a victim of his own hatred and holding on to uh, this 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 negativity and i dared to say something in this movie where i mentioned you know we know we know shackles better than anyone and if you are shackled to your past you're not free to possess your future your prosperous future and so i'm saying a lot in a comedy that I'm hoping people walk away with because this has enhanced my life tremendously. Uh, The power of forgiveness, the power to let these things go and move on. And I mean, my goodness, uh, I've I've been given a platform to deliver that message. And I'm just super happy that it's being received. Another thing I love about Outlaw Johnny Black is when it comes to the character of Johnny Black, a lot of times when it comes to, to comedies of this nature, um, I think some of the ca- characters can be uh, made up of caricature. But Johnny Black isn't caricature. He is a character. There's foundation there. There's something that you build on and something that you rise up and you create in. There's an arc and such. How important was it to make sure that that central character especially had an arc in the movie in that while on one hand he does things of course they're very funny and evokes kind of western conventions and black black exploitation of conventions as well but we see him as a person throughout the film and he goes through a spiritual and emotional journey as 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 much as anything else in the film yeah because those those poignant moments have to be felt throughout you have to service those moments of this his in his great loss as a child and how he he's lost his faith in 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 God and in 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 you know and just humanity. Uh so you have to have actors that make you feel that. So the audience is brought along on that journey as well. And they they desire this same retribution. You know? And what better than a, a Western that's, you know, that, that's steeped in revenge to 
disguise a message of forgiveness. I love the fact that it's a Western that's going to be in theaters. It seems to me over the years, the Western has kind of transitioned more to a small screen experience. Things like Yellowstone and other shows as well have really kind of taken over to kind of Western experience. You don't see them on a big screen anymore, which is a shame because Hollywood in a lot of ways was built on the Western genre. So it's a, it's a very Americana, American experience of, of, of um, uh, ex- experiencing um yeah, storytelling in a lot of way. Is it a pleasure? Is it a pleasure for you to be able to, you know, as as for sure a fan of the genre, to be able to give a western to cinema goers, considering that it's not something that's really done that much anymore. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think when a western is done right, there's nothing much better. That's why it's been around for so long. I think the 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 misstep from Hollywood is to dare to put, you know, kind of uh, look at me celebrities in a place uh, that is reserved for exceptional people. Like the, the Western was, it was outfitted with very exceptional human beings. They weren't just a product of movies and popularity. These people had something. The Charles Bronsons, the Barbara Stanwyck's, everybody who dared show up on the screen back in those days, these were people that you wanted to live vicariously through because they were exceptional human human beings. And now, when you just take the modern celebrity and put them in that place, they don't hold up. They just do not hold up. And that's what I've seen happen over and over. Uh, in a lot of these movies. And it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Um, So I I made sure that everybody who was in this movie felt like they have that substance, that they have that timeless way about them, that you can put them back in the late 1800s and they make sense. Hmm. Final question. I've heard before you talk about how you have these ideas for these other films it's kind of like a collective of of a, like a of different films that you had where you had black dynamite dynamite outlaw johnny black a horror film maybe maybe kind of inspired by blackula and also kind of like this real kind of big martial arts epic we're hoping all of us are and i'm sure you are as well that this movie does really great business a lot of people watch the film because it's a great film um, it's a you know something independent film that people should see. If this does do the success that you're hoping you do, are you looking to jump into those other projects afterwards um, at a much quicker frame as opposed to the break between Black Dynamite and this movie? Are you going to kind of like really jump on the on the wave of success that we're hoping this movie will have and go on to those other projects next? Well, absolutely, but there's. I'm constantly doing things. I, I, this happens to be a unique genre that I intended on doing. There have been obstacles that's kept uh, Black Dynamite 2 from happening um, that I want to avoid in the future. You know, now that I, I'm, I'm given the, the, the option of doing my own stuff, I have a, I have a lot of very exciting projects to share. Well, for everyone out there listening, Outlaw Johnny Black, available now in theaters across the US. I highly, highly, highly recommend people check this movie out because it's a film that has everything for everyone. Um, and I think that it's a movie that really shows um, really great growth and storytelling in you, Michael Jai White. I've been a big fan of yours for such a long time. To see a film like this, um, it fills me with so much joy because it just brings everyone to know you better, I think, as a person and, and as well as a filmmaker. So congratulations to you and uh, best of luck with the film's release. Thank you. Thank you for watching the Matt's Movie Reviews channel. Please subscribe for more reviews, podcast interviews and exclusive content. Also, if you would like to request a review and support my work, please join my Patreon via the link in the description below.